In this video, we'll be talking about the respiratory system in cockroach. Respiratory system is made up of chitinous tubes and it is known as tracheal system. There are chitinous tubes which are there with multiple branches and they open out. There are openings which are known as spiracles. There are 10 pairs of spiracles. Out of these 10, two are thoracic and the remaining eight are abdominal. So these thoracic ones, they are between pro and mesothorax and meso and meta. So one would be between pro and meso and the other one is between meso and metathorax. And in the abdominal spiracles, they are found in all one to eight abdominal segments. Most of these spiracles, they are present on the lateral wall, that is the pleura, except for the first abdominal. First abdominal spiracle is on targum. That is, it is on the dorsal side. All others are on the pleura side. That means on the lateral wall. So when we draw this structure, what we draw is, we actually just make the segments. This is prothorax, mesothorax, metathorax, and then the 10 segments of the abdominal region. Again, if we make the segments, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. This is how the segments are. Now, in, this, in these segments, how these tubes are arranged and where the spiracles are, that is what we are going to be drawing now. So that we understand how the system is working. Let us see the openings which are there in the thoracic region. As we have written, the opening is between pro and mesothorax. That means here at the junction of pro and meso, we would find this opening. And these openings are on the pleural membrane. Same is the case with the second pair, which is at the junction of meso and metathorax. Now, when we come to abdominal region, all abdominal spiracles, they are in the segment, not between the segments. And these are the eight pairs. So this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth abdominal spiracles. Same are going to be on this side. So this is all paired. Each spiracle opens into a small sac-like structure, which is called the atrium. So we will be drawing this whole thing separately also. So this is the spiracle that we have drawn. It opens into a small sac-like structure. So let us draw this sac-like structure here. We may not draw it in all. So spiracles, they open into this sac-like structure. After the sac-like structure, there is this tube-like structure, which is known as the trachea and that is why the system is called the tracheal system. So this opening is spiracle, this is the atria and this is the trachea or the trachea. Inside the trachea are present some spiral thickenings. So here we find that there is this spiral thickening which prevents it from collapsing. And this spiral thickening is made up of a substance called intima. It is spiral and it just provides support so that these tracheal tubes do not collapse. So let us draw this trachea part here, the tracheal tube. And these tracheal tubes, they actually join to form two lateral longitudinal tubes. 
So say this is one lateral tube which we are drawing and all these tracheal tubes have joined to form this lateral tube. Let me draw one here also so that one side is complete. Now let me draw this hole. So this vertical is a lateral tracheal tube or it is also known as lateral tracheal trunk. Lateral tracheal trunk. One more very important thing which we have to remember here is all the spiracles, the openings can be kept open or they can be closed except the first two. That means first and second spiracles always remain open and all others and all others can be closed or opened whenever needed. So first two, that means we are talking about the thoracic spiracles, they will always remain open. Now how is this respiration going to take place? So this is one tube which we have drawn. There would be one more tube which would be coming on this side. So there are two such lateral tracheal trunks and these lateral tracheal trunks they are also interconnected by these transverse tubes that means all these tubes are basically interconnected so that when the air moves in it can diffuse to all parts of the body now what happens after this tracheal tube is formed? This tracheal tube, it divides into branches and these branches are known as the tracheolar ducts or we can simply call it tracheoles. So these are the tracheoles. Around the tracheole is present a large cell. So here it is surrounded by a large cell and we can see the nucleus also and this cell is known as the tracheolar cell tracheolar cell this cell releases some fluid which can be filled or which can get filled inside this tube now how does the respiration take place again respiration is completed in two steps inspiration or inhalation inspiration and expiration or exhalation. In case of cockroach, exhalation is an active process. That means when the muscles contract and the muscles which are going to help, they are called turgosternal muscles. As the name tells us, where are these turbosternal muscles? Suppose we draw the turgum here and sternum here. The muscles are between turgum and sternum. So these muscles are called turbosternal muscles. When these muscles contract, that means turgum and sternum are brought closer. The volume is going to decrease. If volume decreases, pressure is going to increase. If pressure increases inside the tube, air rushes out from higher pressure that is inside the tube to lower pressure that is the atmosphere. That means exhalation is an active process. Now after that these muscles are going to relax. When muscles relax, the targa and sterna they come back to their normal position. That means volume increases. When volume increases, pressure decreases. So air from outside would come in, but when air is moving in, there is no muscle which is contracting. That means there is no energy consumption. And that is why inspiration is a passive process. It is just opposite to what happens in our case. In our case, inhalation is active because here the muscles contract and exhalation is passive 
because during exhalations the muscle relax here during exhalation the muscle is contracting and when the muscles relax that is the time when inhalation or inspiration takes place and the muscles which are responsible are called tergosternal muscle and this inhalation and exhalation takes place only when the cockroaches are moving when the cockroach is at rest at that time what happens is from this tracheolar cell fluid is released and this fluid fills in this complete tube part up till here that means the tracheolar fluid is actually near the spiracle and the diffusion is going to take place from the air to this fluid oxygen is going to diffuse and from the fluid then the oxygen will be supplied to all the parts as soon as the insect starts to move the cell withdraws complete liquid that means all this liquid would be withdrawn it goes into the cell now how is this oxygen supplied we have drawn these tracheoles suppose this is a tracheole which gets longer and it goes up to a tissue so if this is the tissue the oxygen is directly supplied from the spiracle to the tissue if a insect is moving but if the insect is not moving then the fluid is filled inside the tube oxygen is going to diffuse and slowly that oxygen will be supplied to that organ or tissue so important things which we have to remember that it is a tube like complete system made up of chitinous tubes and there is a thickening it is a spring like thickening spiral thickening which prevents it from collapsing openings are known as spiracles we have not labeled it here let us label it here also these are the spiracles total number 10 pairs two in the thoracic region eight in the abdominal region and the second important thing that we have to remember is this that in case of cockroaches inhalation is passive and exhalation is active which is performed with the help of tergo sternal muscles so when the insect is moving there is air which is reaching up to the tissue and when the insect is not moving then diffused oxygen is reaching up to the tissue so this is how the tracheal system of cockroaches for respiration works now in the next part we'll take up another system of